Good morning. My favorite verse is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Um, it's a verse that is meaningful to me because of the many times I've had to do things that are counter to my personality. Um, I think that I can relate to Timothy in a lot of ways because I've had to do things like stand in front of people and say stuff um, that, that I might not otherwise have done. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I think of this verse anytime I feel that I'm being timid or that I'm afraid. Um, it makes me remember to evaluate the situation. You know, why am I afraid? Is this going to make me choose to do something that I shouldn't do or avoid doing something that I should do just because I'm feeling like I want to just kind of shrink into myself? Um, and so being careful not to allow fear and timidity to, to lead us into bad decisions, to remember that God has given us power not to be controlling of others, but strength and courage in difficult situations. He's given us love to motivate us against fear, hatred, and selfishness. And he's given us sound minds and self-control. Some of us might call it executive function to make prudent decisions. This is from uh, Matthew 14, verse 26 through 31. When the delightfuls saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, courageous, or take courage. It's, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, it is you, Peter replied. Tell me to come to you on the water. This reminds me that every time that we take our eyes off of Jesus, especially with me, it seems like I'm always sinking. You know, it's just, it just does. It's just like, you know, we always got to keep a focus on Jesus because if we don't, we start sinking and we start going the other ways. All right, thank you. Good morning. This is Psalm 5, 2. Hear the sound of my cry, my King and my Lord, for to you do I pray. This is my testimony. 24 years ago, I had a heart attack. For my first, and then four years, I had my second. Then I had a defibrillator put in. in the last eight, it lasted eight years. And then I got sick. My whole heart was only beating 25%. Only my left bottom part was working. I prayed and I prayed to the Lord to give me a new heart. The doctors only gave me two weeks. I was getting shot four, five, six times a day because my heart would stop. Finally, they got a donor heart. On 12-27-2019, I was reborn. I put myself in God's hands after, after the operation. I was in ICU. I, w I, was, I would see nurses pushing the gurneys with people on them. And they would open a door, and that door was dark and black in color. This was a good, good for going for a good while. Then the nurses said, "Mr. Flores, you're next." I prayed and I prayed. Then the nurse pushed me toward the door. We passed it, came to another door. It opened. It was bright. We went through it. Then I woke up. Praise the Lord. can't necessarily say that this is my favorite verse but I mean it is just a, an awesome verse you know a lot of verses in the Bible 
definitely are pretty awesome. Um, this is Psalms 1, it's Psalm 17, 6 and 7a, and it's, I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love. And I'm going to read it to you uh, in Spanish, but I'll tell you why I am in just a second. Yo te he invocado por cuanto tú me oirás, oh Dios. Inclina a mí tu oído, escucha mi palabra. Muestra tus maravillosas misericordias. About seven years ago, I went on one of my evening power walks. My walks are usually my time with the Lord, and when I thank him for all his wonders, it's a happy time for me. During the daylight savings time, I get to see the nature in all its glory, and it makes for even a more pleasant time with God. One day, I guess I didn't realize how much I was feeling what I was feeling. One thing led to another, to another thing, and one thought led to another, to another thought. Then I began tearing up. Tearing up went into crying. Crying went into weeping. Weeping turned into sobbing. Sobbing turned into my blurting out like a three-year-old, I miss my daddy. I miss my daddy. So I called out to my, my dad in Spanish. I said, papi, papi, lo extraño mucho. I miss you so much. I thought, Dalia, how embarrassing. Here I am, I'm a grown woman. I've been married to Chris for over 20 years. Our son Javier has grown up and married. We still didn't have any grandchildren at that time. And my father died in 2007. Well, Mary, you remember, you sang at my dad's funeral and Billy and Billy all went and to the funeral. But what was going on? The father-daughter relationship I had with him involved singing to God, praying to God, calling upon God, praising God, talking to God, laughing with God. My dad was a funny guy who saw humor in lots of things. And any time he thought about something of an occasion that was really funny, he would bring up a verse in the Bible that would make him laugh. My relationship with my dad revolved around God. So what was happening in that moment was that I was associating my prayer time with God with the time I spent in prayer and conversation with my dad over the same matters. It's not like I hadn't thought about this before, but this time it was just a little different. When it was becoming increasingly difficult to stop sobbing, I could, um, well, get this, hear my father's voice instructing me to call upon God to comfort me. So I did. Jeremiah 33.3, call unto me and I will answer thee. Jeremías 33.3, clama a mí y yo te responderé. My dad was always quoting scripture, of course, in Spanish. Or if I came to him with a question, it was, well, what do the scriptures have to say about it? ¿Qué te dicen las escrituras? You couldn't have a conversation with my dad that didn't involve this question, especially when it came to matters of life. So I said, please, Father, comfort me. I could hear my voice as dad again. He says, quote the scripture. So I said, Matthew 5, 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mateo 5, 4. Bienaventurados los que lloran, porque ellos recibirán consolación. So my mind was strictly on the scriptures, asking God to comfort me all the way while still power walking. I'm deep in thought. When here comes the jalopy of a car, making its way toward me, and it was a man whose voice I recognized, uh, but I was too in awe of what was in front of me. This didn't look like a neighbor's car, I thought. The man spoke broken English. I was still trying to recognize his voice. He had wavy hair, uh, a mustache, green eyes, and I know I'd seen him before somewhere. I just, I know I'd seen him before. With a smile, he asked in his broken English, Hello? Do you know where is La Macala? And I quickly composed myself and I politely proceeded to give him directions out of the neighborhood and onto the busy street of Macala. We glared at each other, we glared at each other then smiled. And as he was driving away, he said, Thank you, Mrs. Trevino. I stopped dead in my tracks. 
oh, wait a minute, he looked just like my daddy. My daddy used to say, La Macala, jokingly to say Macala. And when he would call me up on the phone, he would say, Aló, is this Mrs. Trevino? Jokingly practicing his Spanish, because he always wanted to say, Hello, is this Mr. El Pozo? You know, my, my, um, my last name. But he would still say that jokingly, uh, even though he spoke English well. <sighs> I called unto God and he answered me. He turned his ear and he heard me. He brought me an angel to minister me, because that's what angels are supposed to do. In an image like my daddy, with whom I could identify to bring me comfort and great love in a most spectacular way, God gave me the opportunity to thank him for my father. God was glorified through my quoting of his scriptures in English and in Spanish. God was honored in those moments. God was and is still the father to me and to my daddy. God was truly in the midst of my spending time with him. God hears our prayers. 